amigos, I'm Sean. And that's Astrid. And we did it. We sold everything, traded our hectic New York City lifestyle for a more beachy existence here in Mexico. Along with our two cats, Sanderson and Indo, this is Sean in Paradise. All right, heading up the street, try to find some waves. Should be good. Just waiting on Astrid. She's gonna come down to the beach and film a little bit. You ready to go? Yeah, ready? that's uh... We sometimes drive in town because, look, it's a 20 minute walk. It's a great walk. It's a beautiful walk. Popping out, popping in. It's kind of easier. The cool thing about that also is that Astrid can go to the little cafe and get some croissant. She gets to get some croissant. What'd you get? Woo! Yesterday we did a lot of driving and very little in the way of surfing. Today we're doing a very little bit amount of driving, and hopefully a lot more surfing. That's what we're going for. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, how did that go? Like nine point nine. Pretty nine point nine ish. So before I started anything, I took the mandolin and I cut down some cucumbers and some onions. And I took this little julianning tool and I cut down the carrot. And then I added spices, salt, pepper, uh, a couple different types of vinegar, and then some sugar. And it's gonna just do its thing and get nice and pickled. Uh, so it'll be nice and pickly and spicy and fun to put on the tacos for later. You want to like use a good bit of onions, use a good bit of garlic. Lano pepper, we'll get that going. These are the Jamaica flowers, and as you saw, we Astrid made juice from them, or she made like a Jamaica tea or an agua fresca. These have been cleaned, they've been rinsed a few times, they've been dried out, and now they're just ready to go. So these are the flowers from the hibiscus plant. It takes a little bit of muscle 
kind of stringy because they can be like a little tough if, they, if you keep them large. Get them down to a texture that reminds you of like pulled pork. You know, a texture that reminds you of carnitas. finely kind of cut it gets and the more it almost looks like a tobacco or a beef jerky or like a pulled pork that hasn't been wetted but what you're creating is you're creating all this like cool surface area that's going to grab the salt and that's what you want now we're going to add the homica right in quality control too if you see any big pieces you want to pull out you can always pull out but at this point it's not really necessary it smells so good now i'm just working the homica in keeping the heat up super high this is where you have to really start thinking about wet versus dry and how things feel like there's times when you want to add more olive oil. There's times when you want to add a little bit of water. Um, you want to keep things moist, but you don't want to keep them too moist because you don't want things to get gluggy and kind of lose their texture. I'm trying to give it like a little bit of a toasted. So I want to keep everything spread. I'm going to let it do its thing for a little bit. So I keep the one hand down here when I do a loose chop like this because it sort of acts like a shield so things don't fly off the table the whole time. So now it's like melting down. You see everything's kind of like kicking out moisture, gaining new moisture and settling down. The mushrooms are like sponges and they pick up all the moisture. They even pick up a lot of the olive oil. So if there isn't a little bit of excess there, you're gonna dry out and burn. Here's your umami part. This is like the real, this is the meaty part of the Jamaica taco. So once the pan's super hot, we're gonna opt to give it a little cerveza. Any cerveza will do but it has to be Mexican. Lid half on so the alcohol burns out. All right, so once most of the beer has uh, gone away, evaporated out, then we're gonna add the first ingredient, which is probably the most important, and that's a little bit of mole. And you basically just start introducing it a little at a time. And I like to clear a little way in the middle and get it melting in the hot spot first, really kind of work it in. And you'll smell all that chocolatey, that cinnamony, that really rich, earthy sort of chocolatey smell. And that's gonna really set the tone for the flavor. Again, you still have the heat super hot. Salsa huichol, it's here from Nayarit, and it's the best. Adds a little kick for sure. The best, mejor. And then last but not least, maybe a little controversial, I add a little bit of Thai roasted red chili paste. Just a little bit. It's just got that exotic flavor that's sort of like, where did this meat come from? Oh, it's not meat? I thought it was meat. That kind of whole deal. It's a flavor you can't quite place your finger on. And I think sometimes when you're making a dish that's imitating another dish, so like this is definitely imitating carnitas, it's kind of, when you're doing it with vegetables, it's fun to give a little surprise. And the Thai spice is kind of like that little bit of surprise. Like, what am I, what am I tasting? You just gotta flavor it however you want to your taste and you know what you like. And if you don't know what you like, try something new. So in a way, sort of like how I make my risottos where you keep the risottos always moving. all the flavors there, but what's questionable is the texture. So I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of liquid. I'm gonna skip the beer and I'm gonna add a little bit of water because I think the flavors are perfect as is. You can hear it's still super hot. Now I'm just gonna work a little bit of that liquid in there. I'm gonna throw the lid on, drop the heat down, and let it kind of do its thing. Let all of those flowers, those pamica flowers, really cook and settle down and become less tenuous, less stringy. Since a few moments ago when I put this down, I've been coming back to it and tasting it and seeing kind of what's doing and like, now I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the mole sauce and get that going. I've already added some crushed pepper. I've added a little bit more salt. Uh, you just kind of go back and keep tasting at it until it tastes like the thing that you want to have. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is that like, you have a concept, you have an idea, maybe you've had the meal out at a restaurant or some someone made it for you, a friend, and you have that idea of what that should be. And it's okay to keep kind of tinkering with it in the pan or in the pot until it resembles that thing. So think like, all right, it's not as spicy or it's not as like sweet as I remember. So then you can add it, you can change it, you can kind of like tweak it a little bit. And maybe it's not gonna be perfect, but that's how you learn how to cook, is that you just keep tweaking and tasting and tweaking and tasting. Perfect, meaty, beautiful hibiscus flowers. Totally vegan and totally amazing. One more tongue full there. They get gradually bigger as you go, because you're like, oh, maybe that first one was a bit small. So then you backfill. That's what we call backfilling. Some black beans that we've heated up. A little bit of corn also been heated up. In there. A little bit here. And cheese. The cilantro. I use my hands, don't worry about that. 
and just a little bit of pickle. Just a little bit of pickling on there. Kind of drizzle it across the top. Gonna add a little drizzle of chipotle mayo. Keep going straight across the top of everything. There you have it. Boom. Ooh.